All right, enough of that. So in my case, I'm going to show you what changes I did to my plain old ugly Timex that had didn't have any cool JavaScript menus. How I modified so that it will have JavaScript menus. Okay. So the first thing that I did, remember, I already told you this, I downloaded the jQuery minimum.js. I put it in my JavaScript library. Okay? And then in my index, which is my home page, notice now and this I didn't used to be able to do this. Now I can create sub menus under a menu. Okay? And they will only pop. Those submenus will only pop when I hover the menu. See that? How do you accomplish something like that? Now I'm going to show the JavaScript version of it. Okay. And I'm going to show it to you on Firefox. Why? Because Firefox has a plugin called Firebug that is going to allow me to dissect this stuff really cool, which the Eclipse browser doesn't have. Okay, so notice I hover and the menu, the sub menus pop up. How do I accomplish that? Okay, let's go anywhere into the menu and inspect the element. And Firebug gets loaded. Okay, and now I'm going to point to my timesheet. So look at this. Timesheets is an anchor that takes me to timesheet list.html. Okay? And this is the title, timesheets. And it belongs to a line item. And there's a sibling line item called register. And there's another one called login. And there's another one called home. And all of them under uh, an unordered list with a specific ID. So the JavaScript JS that I downloaded from the internet, basically all it said is, okay, you want a JavaScript menu to work on your website? You download menu.js and you make sure that your menus your line your menus are going to be part of line items of an unordered list and that unordered list has to have an ID called JSDDM if you do that I guarantee that my code will work that means all your sub menus will show up under each menu that's all you have to do literally yes Stefan question Yes. As a matter of fact, when you download a JavaScript menu, they, no, they will not only give you the JS, they will give you the CSS. So that it looks cool. So that it looks nice. That's exactly what I did. I downloaded a menu.js that has that 
JavaScript that allows me to do the submenus and when I hover it shows up and I also included the menu.css. The menu.css is what allows me to do something like this. Uh, pound JSDDM. So any tag that has that ID will have a background, this background. And it will have this border button. Okay? You will have pretty much this style. Okay? So this on order list, notice that I'm going over it. That on order list covers my entire menu. Okay? Each one of the top menus is going to be a line item. Line item, line item, line item, line item. If you have sub menus under menu, then you gotta create an additional on order list, which initially will be hidden. You guys see this style at that on order list? What does it say? Visibility, colon, hidden. That's a style. That means it's not going to show up. All right? And this on order list contains one and two line items. These guys are my submenus. The first submenu is an anchor to enter hours. This is wrong. The title should say enter hours. Okay? And the second submenu is an anchor to timesheet list. But since they are inside in an order list that it's hidden, they're not going to show up. So when is it that they're going to show up? When I hover. So you guys want to see it? Here it is. I'm coming. Whoa. Notice what happened to my UL style. Visibility, colon, visible. Who on earth changed that? Who changed it? JavaScript. Exactly. JavaScript did it. You want to see it? Together with my menu.css, I downloaded a menu.js. This piece of code in JavaScript is what allows me to do menus and submenus in JavaScript. Okay? So let's analyze it. Anybody familiar with this? Yes. jQuery. When your document is ready, execute the following function. Nameless function. Ooh, wait a minute. What is that? Can anybody tell me? First of all, this is a selector, right? Remember, jQuery is about selector dot action. What is the selector? Can anybody tell me what this selector means? Line items under a pound JSDDM, that means a tag whose ID is JSDDM. Notice that I'm not saying it's a UL or whatever. I know it's a UL, but just pound JSDDM. That means a tag that has that name, that ID. All the line items under it. What am I going to do with them? I'm going to bind them. Bind them? Bind them to what? 
I'm going to bind them. When you bind an element, a tag, you're actually adding code to it. Okay? You're actually, actually adding code to an event that might happen to this tag. In this case, what you're binding is you're binding on mouse over and on mouse out. You want something to execute when somebody goes on mouse over and you want something to execute when somebody goes on mouse out. Can you tell me what it's supposed to execute when it goes on mouse over? JS DDM underscore open. Indeed, that's a JavaScript function. In this case, it is a named function. Thank God. Okay? What does that do? What does JSDDM underscore open do? Well, calls cancel timer, which is another JavaScript, so let's not worry about that for now. Then it calls JS close, which is another JavaScript, right? And then it executes the D, the D menu item. Right? What is the D menu item? Dollar sign this. Oop, that guy again. What does that mean, dollar sign this? The current line item. There you go. The current line item I'm in. I want you to find any ULs. Any ULs under that line item. Okay? And if you find them, equals zero, and if you find them, then I want you to modify their cascading style sheet to what? The property visibility, the value visible. The property, the value. The property, the value. That means you found one. Notice that I have menus, line items, that don't have some menus. So you won't do it. You will only do it to those menus that have some menus. Is that cool? To visibility equals visible. That's the guy that actually did it. Now, why do we need to do this close cancel stuff? What is that? What is cancel in a timer? Well, cancel timer is some condition if close timer, which I don't know, close timer is zero, some kind of variable with value zero, right? So if close timer, that means you're going to have a, clo a timer when you close something, then you're going to say, hey, window, I want you to clear the timeout with this close timer. And then you just sign null to it. Don't know what happened there. I guess I'll figure out when I play with it with the close timer. And then you do a close, a JSDDM close. What does that do? It actually takes, if it says, okay, if there were any DD menu items, what I want you to do, I want you to take the CSS and change the visibility to hidden. So this guy is actually closing the menu or the sub menus that were open initially. Right? So you're making sure that they close before you actually open them. That's what you're doing here. Make sure that they're closed before you open them. Got it? Now, that's when you do a mouse over. What about when you do a mouse out? What do you do? You call JSDDM timer. This guy, you set the timeout on the window, and you say, okay, on this timeout, which apparently it's 900, and always in JavaScript, the units for timing is microseconds. So 900 means 0.9 seconds. Okay? So set the timeout on my window to 0.9 seconds, and then close it. So let's play around with a little bit with this. What happens if I make this 
2000. That's two seconds, right? And the close timer, 1000. Let's see what the effect is. So I'm going to refresh it. Guys, got it? Even though I mouse out it, it, it took like a little bit, right? So you probably don't want that timeout so high. So you don't want to close it with such a high timeout. But you want it smooth, right? You don't want it right away like, oh, what happened? You want it smooth. So that's why you play around with your microseconds. That's how I implemented JavaScript menus in my Timex. Is that the only way? <laughs> Man, you're going to find out on the internet a million ways of implementing JavaScript menus. In fact, I already mentioned some of you have or is going to have a whole bunch of options in your menus. Okay? And you only have so much real estate in your browser. So you probably are going to have to implement accordion menus. Accordion menus are the ones that you click and they expand. The sub menus expand. And when you unclick it, then they contract. Because it makes more sense. Okay? And how are you going to be able to do that? Same way. You just go out there do a search on accordion menu, you're going to find 55 different ways of implementing Just pick one, download the accordion.js, the accordion.css, and make it work with your menus. That means there's going to be some tag that is going to have a specific name, and that's it. Play around with your seconds, microseconds, that's it. But you have to understand JavaScript. You have to understand jQuery. You've got to be able to read this code and say, Oh, I know what it's doing. Ah, exactly. So the question is, the way you implement your menus is by having line items. And that's exactly, let's go into the menu. That's exactly how I did it. So somewhere in here, there's got to be a menu section. Here it is. See that? My menus are inside a UL. That's it. So if I implement it for home page, guess what you're going to do with the rest of the pages? Cut, paste, cut, paste. Because you already know that it works for home page. And it's all inside my UL. My UL has a name JSDDM which has line items and each one of the line items if they have some menus we have their own UL with their own line items. And each line item has an anchor because that's the whole idea, right? That when you click on the line item it's actually an anchor to a, me a menu. So by doing this and copying it all across my pages, I can do something as cool as this. I can go to login. I can type an employee ID. I don't care what. A password. I don't care what. Click on signing and I'm taken to timesheet list. This is a live website. Then I can go into any timesheet and will take me to enter hours. I'm fooling you. This looks like a live website that is doing real stuff. But it's not. It's just a mock-up of snapshots that are linked together. 
but that mock-up will give me a really good idea of how the website, the real website, when it comes with real data, will look like, how it will behave. So now I am going to come in here, notice that I cannot save or submit, I'm going to pick a department, oh, now I can save and submit. Is it saving or submitting? No. It's not doing anything. It's just a mock-up, right? You guys will implement that functionality in the second half with PHP. So I put eight hours, I put eight hours, I put eight hours. Submit, nothing happens. So I sign out, back to home page. Can I register? Sure you can. This is registration. In ID, notice that register is not enabled yet. Full name. Password. I'm going to re-enter my password, and it's not going to be the same. Email. I'm not going to put a manager. can register. There is a field, a mandatory field that I have not put in. Now I can register. How do I do that? Took a while, guess. JavaScript. And you can actually download this code, which was available last week, and look at it, how I implemented it. Question. So now that I can register, when it's stop, what does it say? Password and re enter password must be the same. That's JavaScript validation. It's actually making sure that the stuff that I'm putting makes sense. If there's something that is wrong, it's not going to allow me. That's validation. So I'm missing. Yes, good point. Register. Now I register me. I can sign in. I can go and input and enter hours. I can go from my menus to create a new, or I can take a look at my unpaid timesheets. It's not real, okay? But I have make sure that my menus work, that they're all going to real places. You will not believe how many points I'm going to take off from your homework if I'm taken to nowhere land when I click on any one of your menus, okay? I don't want to be taken to nowhere land, and nowhere land is like pfft, 404. I cannot find that page. Okay? Now, this takes me to my last section that I want to cover tonight. Now that I have almost a same my real website, right? Linked together. And I'm doing it all this from Can anybody tell me where am I doing it from? The file system. Okay, websites don't get served from the file system. Okay? Websites get served from a web server. The web server f manages the file system. You don't want browsers to be managing your file system, believe me. That's a high security risk. So now we're going to have to deploy our four, three, five pages that we have so far into a real web server. 